I know I've been wearing the same shirt for, for days and days and days. I just never shower. What, what, what can I say, you know? So, uh, look, at before long, you're going to inherit the kingdom, so be of good cheer. Uh, talking about free will, and we've been talking about this objection that either free will is caused or it's uncaused in either way. Whether it's caused or uncaused, it can't be free. If it's caused, it's necessitated. If it's uncaused, it's capricious. Either way, it's not what we call free will, and I've been arguing against it. Uh, so yesterday I talked about this ascetic argument, or whatever the previous blog was, um, and that um, uh, sharing the conviction of Alfred North Whitehead and others that aesthetics is a, is a primary, if not the primary, metaphysical category. And so when we think of causation, we should think of uh, in aesthetic categories. And so I, I pointed out how you can think of an artist's aesthetic aim, um, aiming at a certain aesthetic satisfaction, sometimes called, as a sort of cause. And a painting, such as we find here on my book, God Evil, or uh, Satan, the Problem of Evil. Um, there's a cause. A everything in his painting is caused, but I would argue it's not necess necessitated. And by cause, I mean, uh, given the, uh, ar the artist's aesthetic aim, uh, every aspect of this painting is retroactively intelligible. But given that same aesthetic aim, uh, it's not the case that every aspect of this painting was ret uh, futuristically predictable. Uh, the painting could have been slightly different different within a certain uh, parameter, um, and yet that it would still be explained by that artist's aesthetic satisfaction. And what's interesting is that uh, this is really how uh, quantum physicists are talking about well, ultimate reality, uh, with they regard ultimate physical reality anyways. Um, they, they, it's argued that prior to the measurement of a quantum particle, um, all that exists are, 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 are possibilities. That the quantum particle, when it's in what's called its superposition state, um, you can't predict meticulously how it's going to uh, behave. Um, you, you can put it on a bell curve of, of, of probabilities. Here's my, isn't, it, isn't this wonderful uh, graphics I have here? So here's the bell curve. And this is the, the particle in superposition state. And um, here you have, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it is called a wave packet of, of probabilities. And here's the particle once it's measured. But it could have been here, 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 here. And it decreases in probability as it goes to the outside here. This is also related to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, uh, which states that you can, uh, the, the more fine-tuned your measurement of a particle's position is, the less you can uh, know about its velocity. And the more fine-tuned your measurement of its velocity is, the less you can know about its uh, position. Um, now it's some, uh, and then when they measure it, it's called the collapse of the wave packet, uh, because now the, the the probabilities and possibilities have been reduced down to one. But prior to that, and it said that that all that exists are the possibilities and the probability, the wave packet. Now there are some who still hold out uh, Einstein's view that that uh, uh, quantum theory is an incomplete theory, precisely because we can't yet predict meticulously how uh, uh, particles are going to behave. Um, but see, Einstein and all who hold this view work on the assumption that there can only be one effect for any given cause. And if that's your assumption, well, then you have to assume that it's incomplete theory. But what I'm arguing is why assume that? Um, there's just uh, no, no really good reason to, to make that case. Sure, in the observable world, you have a high degree of regularity uh, where the same effect follows the same cause. But there's no reason to assume that that's a metaphysical rule, that it could not be otherwise, that there can't be some dimensions of reality uh, where that doesn't apply. And it seems that most, most quantum theorists hold to uh, Neil Bohr's uh, interpretation, with, or the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics, which say that, that quantum theory actually is a complete theory. It's just that at the, at the level of quantum particles, uh, well, you have got a, a degree of indeterminism. I would argue that uh, you have other kinds of causes that are also... Uh, don't necessitate their their effects. So uh, yeah, I, I, there's a, uh, a book that I and some friends did called The Cosmic Dance, which we hope to give away uh, at some time here in the near future on this website. That talks about quantum theory and um, um, oh, complexity theory and chaos theory and non-equilibrium thermodynamics and relativity theory, and tries to show how all of those uh, are pointing in the direction, even relativity theory, of um, of an open future uh, where possibilities are real. Uh, other good books on this, uh, one guy who really is great on this is, is uh, John Polkinghorne. Here's his book, A Faith of a Physicist. He's got some others out there as well. And uh, he holds, he uses quantum theory as a way of kind of grounding free will. Um, another guy, another great book on this is uh, Keith Ward's God, Necessity, and Chance. This is really a very, very good book. Uh, here's another John Polkinghorne book called Reason and Reality. You might want to check that out. And for those of you who are really into this stuff, 
uh, you want to get uh, philosophical consequences of quantum theory, uh, reflection on Bell's theorem, though this one is really a doozy. All right, God bless you guys. Live in love as Christ loved you. See you later. Bye.